السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وقت معايا عربية مرسيدس دبليو ميتين وعشرة فيها ده شغال تمام وده مستعمل وعايز يكوده على العربية ومش شغال مفيش Hello everybody now I'm having this W210 Mercedes Benz uh, maybe uh, 1997, 98, 99 and this key is the working key and this one is original used key as you see the Motorola very old type for Mercedes Benz uh, and the customer needs to program this one uh, I'm not sure if I can do this or not uh, for writing data on that one but we will read the EIS data and get the password from this working key and try if we can do this or program this one uh, it will be good if not we will program standard Chinese BE key and the first thing we need to check is the frequency because if this one uh, the frequency doesn't match the vehicle the remote will not work and I will not try to do anything with it so this re remote is working and also unfortunately this one is not working till you point the IR uh, to the door handle but it has a frequency of 315 and this one also the same frequency so we have to try to program this one for the car and if not we will program standard BE key for this car okay so now I will check further if BVDI Pro can write the EEPROM to that chip or not and now for those two keys I suspect that this car uh, should have a frequency of uh, 433 and maybe the, the frequency for this key is causing the remote not to work from uh, enough distance and only works while pointing this infrared towards the door handle only so I will program a Chinese key and change the frequency with CGDI uh, to be uh, 433 then test the remote function maybe uh, the problem on uh, the frequency on the, that key and maybe uh, the problem is on the car itself and uh, before that I need to uh, connect to the EIS without disassembling it and using this platform because I have only on CGDI I have only 16 pin and this car uses 38 pin uh, diagnostic connector so I disassembled this one and found that on my wiring here uh, the EIS sure is having power and ground and K line Here I disassembled uh, the plastic cover for the connector as you see here and uh, those are not connected to the platform and here we have power ground and K-line look at the K-line this wire this one is going to on the 16 pin is going to pin number one okay so pin number one on the 16 pin connector is the K line and it will go there on pin 14 on this connector so I will open star finder go to 210 web then 
for the wiring diagram for uh, the EIS, we need to type in 73, then enter. Go for the wiring diagram for the EIS. Here we have connector B, A, but sure, we don't need those because they don't have enough pins, as you see. Here we have pin number 14. So uh, this connector should be connector B, as you see, because pin number 14 is for diagnosis, as you see here. And it also have can wires. But it should have power to power and ground. My connector is having power on pin number seven, and I don't see pin number seven here. Anyway, I'm sure that this one will be K line. Okay. Maybe I have another connector for W two hundred and ten. I don't remember. I didn't use it for a long time ago. Maybe I connect another one with this while reading on bench. Anyway, pin number 14 will be K line and it will go to connector C3 on pin number 9. On maybe the fuse box. Yes, the fuse box on the uh, front left side on the car. So I will go back. All of that process, uh, because I don't need to disassemble and read on bench. I have this wiring to read on bench, but I don't need to. I don't need to disassemble to do the job faster and. Uh, Pin number 14 on the EIS will go to connector C3, pin number 9. At the end, it should go to the diagnostic socket. We should look for C3, pin 9. Yes, this one. C3 pin number 9 will go to No, I don't need the side of the AIS. No, no. For this one come from uh, the AIS pin number uh, 14 will go to C3 pin number 9 and internally on the fuse box it will go through Uh, pin, uh, I'm sorry, connector M4 and uh, will end on pin number 20. Okay, on the diagnostic port or socket. So, pin number 20 is. Um, the K line and I will go back I forgot uh, the diagnostic socket uh, number so I will go back here X11 by 4 okay so 
copy close back back paste we'll search for that and go to the diagnostic socket as of it should be as of because uh, the lower model is having a blade key okay so click on that because power and ground that uh, we only need is constant and uh, ground will be on pin number one and as I remember power will be on pin number three okay so on the on the diagnostic port pin one is ground uh, three is power and we will connect on uh, the obd 16 pin for uh, cgdi as on that uh, on the 38 we will connect pin number one to uh, the ground on the obd 3 is power to power on the OBD and 20 to uh, pin number 1 as we saw here so we will connect these three wires and uh, read the, try to read the AIS by OBD 2 and now using this connector for lunch that fits here I found the numbers going this way this is pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and will go this way so from this uh, 38 connector we will need pin number 1, 3 and pin number 20 to connect uh, to a 16 pin connector now I connect it this way One three twenty and four and five ground sixteen power one K line and I'm not able to read the AIS. Maybe there is a loose connection here or maybe I'm wrong on the wiring diagram. I'm not sure, but um, I will try to read uh, via IR. I will not double check the wiring again. Okay, now I managed to read the AIS with the simulator key via IR with connecting power sure for uh, CGDI external power this one wait this external power to CGDI then via IR I managed to read the EIS now I will do it once again to show you Please insert the simulation key. Reading EIS. Okay. And now I'll take that key out. Then read the password from the original working key. Read write key. Read key chip. Read BE key password. Copy, save, uh, I'm sorry, paste, then save EIS. That go to test new folder 210, then save the file here. Save file successfully. I'm not sure for the 38 uh, connector if I'm wrong on pin number 20 or not I think I'm wrong there but I uh, don't have enough time to double check the wiring again on Starfinder because I have too much customers waiting so um, maybe I will check that later or maybe the connection itself is loose because I'm connected with this pin not sure why that uh, process failed 
but anyway reading via IR is pretty much faster so now I will get as I told you I will get the new key to program it uh, as I told you notice this key the remote from inside the vehicle doesn't work but if you do this now it's locked now it's unlocked but it will only work from very short distance pointing the key toward the door handle so now I will get the second key and test if the remote work uh, good or not uh, now I got the new key and if I read it it is new and uh, I need firstly to generate the key file uh, W210 open and generate Okay, I will wait for that and come back again when files uh, are generated. Okay, now I got the key files. So I will save them here. Okay, then go to write the new key. Open file right, okay. Number seven fifty one. Open writing key April. Right success, okay. Then insert the key first time, take it out, insert it again. The LED gun now if I switch the ignition on the ignition came on we'll take it out again insert the key and try to start the car and the car started now I will test the remote do you hear that the problem was the frequency because uh, that key is 315 so now I'm sure that the problem for the remote was on the key look here this car uses a frequency of uh, 433 and this one is 315 look on that one okay so now I think I'll tell the, cust the customer that um, the original key will not work for this car because it has a frequency of 315 uh, okay that's it